G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. So today, beautiful sunny Saturday. Uh, it's 8.40 in the morning. Uh, we're headed out to Sydney Motorsport Park out in Eastern Creek. Uh, there is an NRMA EV drive day whereby you get to learn about EVs, you get to learn about charging infrastructure and I guess hopefully there'd be cars for you to see. Uh, the intent of the day for me is to record a snippet, a walkthrough of what you guys can experience there. Understanding that uh, some of you may not be able to attend due to uh, your location. It is in uh, Sydney, New South Wales. Um, there will be plenty more of these opportunities as far as I've read. So I'll drop a link down below in the comment section or in the description section so that you guys can register to attend. Um, and yeah, I'll record short clips here and there of the day and hopefully you guys will get to see what the day is all about and if you're interested you guys can register to go through too. Uh, thankfully it is the internet and you guys don't have to go through with the travel time so the next clip will just fast forward and we'll be there already. So see you soon. So starting back here at the car park you can see that it's uh, on the smaller circuit of Eastern Creek and I'll pan around as you guys can see. So there's the event along with the smaller, I think it's called South Circuit at Eastern Creek Raceway. Okay, hi, we're here with Nikesh. How are you today? Yeah, good morning. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to have a chat with your audience. So I'm Nikesh, I look after EV policy at the NRMA. So we are here at the NRMA Drive Days at Western Sydney Motorsport Park. So we've had uh, two fleet days where we had lots of fleet managers come in and take part in information sessions and drive the vehicles of their choice. Uh, the next two days are for the public and so they get to come here and uh, try different electric vehicles um, so they can have the experience of driving different body types and, and, and you know, different uh, battery capacity vehicles. They um, also get to go around and uh, speak to various store holders and get their uh, questions answered around char the charging piece, the various models that are available in the market uh, and also find a lot of information about um, how NRMA is deploying charges across the country, particularly the 170 charges that will be rolled out across uh, what we are calling the national, uh, you know, will become the national backbone for the EV charging network around the country. Um, also, you know, it's just a wonderful occasion for people to meet other EV enthusiasts. Uh, we've got lots of um, the associations of EV owners like Ava here. So, you know, they have, uh, you know, the on the ground experience of actually owning an EV and uh, speaking to how they charge the vehicle at home and what their experience is like in terms of the efficiency of the vehicles. So, all in all, just a fantastic opportunity to um, enjoy various uh, electric vehicles and uh, find out any information they need to know. Uh, and so, we work with the New South Wales government to run these events uh, in, in uh, Greater Sydney and across uh, regional New South Wales as well. So so uh, people have a real understanding of the technology and hopefully this uh, enables us to uh, encourage people to take up EVs and uh, you know, um, you know, prepare for the electric transition. Awesome. Thank you, Nikesh. All right. Pleasure. All right, here we are at Sydney Motorsport Park. We've just entered. I'll pan around. I'll do a walkthrough in a minute, but we are about to go on our test drive. So, loop back soon. So this is the car we're driving, a electric Hyundai Kona. Enjoy the helmet cam footage of uh, the racetrack.
All right, so I've come down to one end of the, uh, the racetrack. There's a cafe just over there. So as you drive in, you park up over there. Then you come through the entrance over there. And then over here, you've got, I guess, just an area where you can have lunch. There's a cafe shop just over here. The racetrack, just the small circuit you can see through there. We'll go there in a moment. Looks like you've got a couple of display cars here. And then you register for the test drive over there. And then you'll walk through the new Cooper Bourne that's landed in Australia. Unfortunately, couldn't line up for a test drive for this one. Wasn't available at the time that I got mine, so perhaps next time. Alright, so we've got Australian Electric Vehicle Association here, a couple of Nissan Leafs, an MG and a Tesla Model Y and an EV6 GT line here. So that is there, yeah. If I was in a residential building, would you have this controlling other stuff or is there this for each part? Uh, so, so this is not a solution unless you have So as you can see, all private vehicles. Very different set of rims compared to what you'd normally see. So over here you've got EV charging solutions. Powered by ABB. In this garage, so this is the section where you get ready for uh, the test drive. There's some additional information here. Sydney EV chargers, EVSE, Warbox, ABB. We've got some NRMA vehicles here. You've got uh, some more NRMA sections here. We've got BYD, Sixth, Drive Electric New South Wales, another BYD vehicle here. Whenever we go on holiday. Red Book Inspect, uh, EV Beetle, Cooper Bourne, we'll come back to have a look at this in a moment, and new Ionic 6, and a electric Mercedes van. So those three are probably some of the newest ones that they've left here at the end. Very cool. All right, so the last three cars here, let's take a look around. Here's the Cupra. No front at all. So if you want storage space in the front, forget about that. Let's jump into the driver's seat. All right, so in the driver's seat, here's how the seats look like. This here is a cloth-like material. Um, close it to it. So that's how big your dash looks like. That's how it looks like your little screen over here. And if I can just close one door, I'll show you guys how the side mirrors all look. So in terms of driving position, that's probably where my eyes are at. And it seems really far to the right over here, but maybe that's just because of my seating position, uh, where the mirrors are. Beautiful steering wheel, as you can see. 
They're very nice. And it definitely feels like a Volkswagen. The steering wheel feels really good. Definitely thinner than the Tesla, but uh, very nice. So panning around, that's the rear view mirror. Vanity lights. No sunroof, no glass roof. And there's the back, we'll have a look at the back in a moment. Uh, let's look over here, let's come down and let's look over here. So air vents, really long, big storage space over here. So space for two cup holders and something else over here. That over here looks like a uh, wireless phone charging port and then a big glove box. Uh, not a glove box, sorry, a big storage box over here. Glove box wise. There you go. In terms of rear seat space. No transmission tunnel section. And cloth seats at the back as well. Now in terms of space, that there looks a bit tight only because the front has been pushed to the back. Two cup holders and I presume that is to pull this down. A straight pass through for a hatch. And it is five seats in total, three at the back, with usual one set and two sets of isofix seats. This bit here is something new in the design. It's gloss here, matte here with 3D etching. So this actually indents in over here. It's quite nice. Jumping through to the back. So let's close that first of all. Uh, so that's how the vehicle looks like. Opens here. So that's what the rear looks like. Quite a deep boot, which is good. If you need to do any shopping, I'll hold that camera on there so you can see. So that's my hand there. That's about how deep you'll get. So nothing will just slide straight out. That's a slide through. And underneath, not much there. Doesn't look like there is a spare tire at all. And here's just a view from this side. All right, let's look at this one next. This is the Mercedes electric van. All right, let me get my bag off. Okay, so first things first before you step in, you can see that it's pretty high off the ground. I uh, don't know what that there is, but um, either way, there's an actual proper side step that's built into the door. So I'll close that out. A bit weird that I'm assuming this is over $100,000, but this is just plastic. Either way, open that. Your first click for your door in terms of shopping center stuff. That's it there. Your next click is out here. So almost 90 degrees, which is pretty good. And as I said, uh, you've got your side step here and let's get in in a sec. So here's how the front seat looks like. It's a bit of a hard leather, definitely not soft leather. And uh, not too sure if there is uh, memory seating doesn't look like looks like these are all manual adjust manually adjustable so perhaps a different spec base spec maybe all right let's jump in all right I'll put my bag down and close one door wow that really sounded hollow possibly because this is a van and there's lots of space so it just sounded hollow um, okay, so from the driver's position, so remember I am roughly uh, 
170, 172 centimeters tall. Um, and this is essentially holding the view at my eye level. So if you look down at the gauge cluster, that's the view that you'd get if you're driving. Then from the right hand side, if you're looking at your wing mirror, you'd be looking down over here. It's a fairly big uh, side mirror, which I'd guess you'd need because this is a pretty big car. Other side, I'd say uh, similar doors open, so I can't really show you that. Uh, there is so much space here that you can see. So if I'm sitting here, right down between my legs, you can see heaps of space. It literally feels like uh, I'm sitting on a couch. So my legs are pretty much just sitting there. So you've got heaps of storage here, including what I think is, yep, 12 volt. And then I can even fit my full size backpack here. So there's actually nothing here. So you could actually walk around through to the back, but we'll look at that in a moment. That's the side. That's the screen you get here. And again, um, it's potentially because of the different variants of the vehicle, but this one here looks like a small screen. Doesn't look like what uh, Mercedes has kind of done based on their design. It's not the big screen that kind of pans around. Uh, either way, on the cluster here, your usual speedo and no taco since it's EV, so you've got charge, economy and boost along with the power. Then the usual uh, mirror over there. And then in this spec, there is no glass roof, no sunroof. So we'll pop over to the other side. All right, uh, so by the way, from the outside, that's how the car looks when you open it. And as I was saying, my feet were pretty much lined up over here. So it literally is like a couch. Um, so glove box wise, decent size. Over here, doesn't look like there is any storage. I'm not too sure what this is for, but it feels like a tin can. Either way, no storage here, and just on that side, there's no storage there either. But you do have some elastic, I guess, storage pockets if you need. Now, remember, as I said, on the front, there is all the space over here, so you can get through to the back. All right, so I'm in the passenger seat over here. Here's the amount of space that uh, I have. Now, close the door, that's essentially what I see. Now, it seems like there is a stack of glass because it's actually pretty much towards just above my hip where the glass starts. So I'd imagine that you'd get fairly hot in here, especially if the sun is on the side. Either way, uh, let's step to the back and let's see how much space there is. All right, so three seats, both sides are open, so based on me sitting at the front there that's how much space you have there so there's quite a fair bit so this is almost like uh, I'd say better than economy class on an aeroplane you, you can definitely move your legs easily around you can also over here and I'd say in the third as well I'm not too sure if you can uh, if there's any air vents down there so I'll, I'll drop the camera down to see can't work it out from there but there definitely is air vents over here and on the top there is uh, some air con vents over here so it looks like you open it here and I was thinking that might be a hook or something but nope not too sure what that bit is and just controls over here and then you've got your lights so air con vent here there's one over here and then looks like there's one over there for the back and there's another one over there as well. But for the most part, oh, you've also got armrests for the front as well. Uh, for me sitting in the middle, and I'm a fairly big guy, definitely heaps of space. I'm not even going over this side or this side. So you could definitely fit three in this second row very comfortably. So let's check out the third row. Okay, so uh, I would say from the side, you'd flick this up or down, yep, flick that up, then that rolls in, and then right, 
at the back over here there's a latch and that unlocks it and there you go so if I could sit very comfortably at the front there and again built in uh, built in step so you can see that's how much space you've got there and it looks like the rails actually all sit together so you could probably still adjust them front uh, front and back as you go and there's a cup holder over here so let's jump to the back and let's pull this down all right again feels better than flying economy my legs can definitely move around this is me over here Back definitely has uh, privacy glass or is, is tinted. Air convent here. There's none for the middle person, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, the space spans across exactly the same. So, and either way, me in the middle, I'm not protruding over this person's space or this person's space. So there's definitely enough space. A little card holder or something to put here, maybe a phone uh, and a cup holder there no uh no usb ports at the back from what i can see and maybe that's just on this variant but that's the same that you've get you get over here all right let's check out the boot let's see how we can get out so uh if i was in the back i'd say i should be able to kick that up okay so it looks like you can just kick that up push it forward and the seat just actually detaches without needing to fold down. So that's a space that you get there. And that's it there. So let's check out the boot. One thing I forgot to check is, uh, does this have electric doors? So uh, there doesn't seem to be, oh, that might be the button. That might be the button there or else you just pull the handle. So let's give it a go. Yep, there you go. And again, I don't know how many specs there are, so I'll have to look it up. I'll put the price and the details of the vehicle of what I find uh, somewhere up on the video when I get home later. So electric doors, again, let's pull that out. There you go. And let's have a look at the boot. So it's an eVto Tourer, that's the specification, that's how the car looks like. This camera right here, and oh, doesn't look like it's even got an automatic swing. So it's a manual lift for this spec anyway. And we've got a bunch of stuff here. Charge cable definitely doesn't look like there is a spare wheel here but it seems like based on looking at the rails over here you should be able to adjust the seating all the way back till about here so you've got really less storage space and in terms of you having that all the way back the chairs all the way back it's probably from my fingers to my elbow in terms of additional space that you have so not a whole lot and uh, yeah that's it so how many seats you got three six so it's an eight seater car and uh, yeah. And in terms of closing, yeah, there definitely isn't anything automatic. You've got this latch here that you'll need to pull down. And then use your hands and push. So the only thing I couldn't find in the car was how to unlock to have a look at the charge port. From walking around the car, it looks like it's probably that one there but it seems to move but doesn't unlock originally i thought it was there because that's where the ice version is but if you have a look there's actually nothing so i thought it could have been here as well but this clearly has just been blocked off and it's somewhere at the front because it doesn't show anywhere else around the car so they have it charge ports most likely right there but if i'm wrong drop a comment down below tell me where it is and for the other viewers to know as well and here's the final car the ionic 6 so here's a front view of how it looks like it's a very unique design 
lots of little LEDs you can see here. And this one looks like it's got pearl white paint. And on this side, it's in the direct sunlight. So a couple of other things you notice. That and shark fin antenna there is actually clear. And then on the back, you can see this bit here essentially looks like there's lots of little small LEDs or that little grid pattern that you can see there, similar to how the light goes around the back. So let's get in the car, we'll have a look. So these door handles pop out here. Okay, so you can see it's a very nice interior. So here's what the seats look like. And you've got a whole big storage compartment over there. It doesn't look like there's any under seat storage. So let's get in and see what it looks like. Okay, so just before I close the door, you can see a uh, Bose speaker over here. All right, so at my eye level, that's what it kind of looks like. That's what you'd see. I'll open the door to see if the screen lights up. There we go. And that's the rear view mirror. I'll hold it up like that. All right, so screen's not working. There's no power here, we need the key, so I can't show anything else, but from an eye level, that's essentially your driving position for the most part. You look down at that. Uh, looks like based on that there, that there is a heads up display, so that's great. Then that's your side view mirror. Again, that's the rear view, and that's the other side. Now in terms of driving position, uh, this car feels more like a, uh, sports car in terms of seating position as you can see if I hold this further back my legs are stretched out So I'm seeing more actually flat to the ground as compared to uh, That Mercedes over there. So you're sitting more flat down and sitting more out So I guess sort of like what Formula One car drives uh, Drivers sit like except nowhere near those speeds so uh, steering wheel over there you'll notice no buttons over here however all of the buttons have been relocated over here to the middle two cup holders phone charger usb i'm guessing that probably lights up based on your aircon potentially then over here we've got two usb slots then over this side uh it doesn't drop down it actually pulls out like a tray for the glove box and uh, yeah, that's your storage space there. And I'll pan through to the back. Through to the front. All right, we'll jump in the back. So this is my seating position here. So we'll have a look at how the back is. Okay, so based on me sitting at the front, that's how much space you've got in the rear. So there is a lot of space. So I'll jump in. Let's close that door. Okay. So, quite some decent foot room. It is, I, f I feel that that's a bit higher though, because on my legs over here, don't know if you can see that, it's actually arched, so there's a gap over here. So I'd say uh, on long trips, you might want to actually have a stretch out. But at the same time, uh, you've got lots of foot space here to move left and right. So I guess it's acceptable. Uh, so events to USB-C slots there. There is no sunroof, glass roof, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very limited bottle holder here. I presume that's probably for your phone. Jumping around the side over there. ISO fixed points as usual, two cup holders. Uh, and yep, there you are. It is five seats, so three at the rear, 
what I am not sure of is whether or not this can actually fold down as I pass through considering how low the roof slants now. So we'll have to have a look at the boot. So let's go. All right, so let's push that. Looks like a pretty small entrance for the boot. Got a mobility kit for your tire. There's the boot, so it looks like it is only split fold. So that side there, that side there. So 60, 40, I believe that's what they call it, unless I've got it wrong. So over here, uh, you can pull this down as well. So if we pull that, that probably unlocks it, and then you should be able to just pull the seats down. So we've unlocked that from the boot. Let's pull this down. There you go, that's all the space that you have. So it's not the perfect shape. You can see over there that you're still limited by the space. So you've still essentially got a gap. So even though the entrance is big over here, uh, you've definitely got it smaller over there. So when you load things through, it's gonna have to slope like this. Uh, so let's have a look under looks like just EV charging equipment so no spare tire most likely because you've got this kit over here and that's where you charge So, um, this is the other end. We've gone through those three vehicles over there. You can see here's essentially the racetrack that it goes all the way around for the test drives. They come back here, then inside over there, you jump in, you go for your drive around. And then a couple of vendors, as you've seen over here. All right, guys, we're back out in the car park. I think we're done for the day. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the content there. Uh, as I said, in the description, I'll put a link to uh, how to book or how to get involved in the next EV drive day or EV event for the NRA. And thanks again to the NRA for organizing that. Other than that, if this video helped you in any way, shape or form, give it a like, thumbs up, subscribe. You know all that drill. Thank you very much. And we'll see you soon with more content. Take care.